Good morning. I hope you're well and I am back in Whitefish after 17 days of camping in the wilderness and sort of being out there, right? And um, it's been a really tough re-entry and part of it is that there's a mentality or a pattern of behavior that exists in a town, whether it's a small town like Whitefish, Montana, or it's a huge city that after being away from it, I'm noticing it from a different perspective. So I thought I would share that with you. So the title for today is like these solar flares and our intelligences. So what I've noticed is that, you know, I've spent months now talking about flares, talking about what they are, um, how often they're happening, what their strength or, or, or method, uh, method of measurement is, the impact they have on us and how we can adapt. That all makes sense to me, right? And we've been sharing that. And the numbers on YouTube have gone up and down depending on what I'm talking about with the flares. What I want to keep bringing to you and, and inviting you to, to explore is that when these energetic pulses from the sun hit us, hit our bodies, hit our earth, hit everything that is sentient, everything that has a cellular system, right? It opens up our systems. It ignites our cells. It... Um, initiate shifts and changes as we're adapting and and it happens within us and it happens outside of us so we're no, it, we're experiencing as i've talked about enormous amounts of changes and what it is also doing is it is opening up our dimensions it's opening up all of our um, energy centers whether it's our chakras whether it's our sephras using the tree of life whether it is our meridians these are all being activated in new levels so whether we call this an awakening whether we call this coming online um, it's enhancing us and it's also forcing us to make some decisions that and shifts and changes that we're kind of going like I didn't think at this point in my life I'd be making this kind of choice whether it's staying at work staying in a relationship um, staying in a house things that we thought we'd be there forever we're just no longer able to maintain because of these shifts in our energy makes sense right so something that I noticed this summer is that my you know let's talk about the three intelligences right so the the mind intelligence and I talked about this last week the mind intelligence is how we think it's how we plan it's how we gather information and put it into systems our heart which is, you know, a much bigger intelligence, 5,000 times more um, uh, stronger, 5,000 times stronger than our mind intelligence is how we feel. It's how we develop trust. It's how we navigate in the world. And then our gut, which is down in the solar plexus to our sacral, right, is how we know. It's where our intuition lies. These are being unlocked and they're being opened. And for some of us who've been navigating almost our entire lives using our um, wicked smart minds, right? Our ability to, to, to gather information and make decisions quickly, um, have roles in the community, roles within our work, um, using our minds, our, our, our finding our minds are not necessarily working the same way, right? So um, I also have Notice since I spent 17 days out in the wilderness um, that I have less rigidity, less patience around the rigidity of the mind. You know, I'm not thinking and, and, and analyzing and putting things together nearly as much as I used to, and I have very little patience for those that do. So whether it's the patience with the details, the facts, the paper trail, the documentation, the references, the um, degrees, and, and I had heard earlier that we are, will become a paperless culture and I thought that's really good for it for ecology and then I started to think well maybe the paper list is like where you went to school what your degree is who you who your professors were what books you've read has less to do with who we are when we are more in that heart intelligence right so I'm in noticing that the heart intelligence is starting to expand in myself of course because I spent time navigating it and spent in and, and playing with it over the time I was up in the mountains, but also with those around me and noticing that their heart intelligence is, is, is vibrationally um, interacting and responding. So 
that heart intelligence is is being activated by the flares. I'm just going to say that. And however we do that, however we um, manage that is up to us, right? Because the heart really is about trusting when a vibration feels good and not trusting when a vibration doesn't. So it isn't something that we can experience with our mind. Yeah, we can get signals up into our into our heads, into our nervous system that says, whoop, whoop, you know, warning, this is not safe. I'm not diminishing that. What I'm saying is that the initial information is coming from that broader vibrational heart perspective that we are just now getting used to working with, right? So when we are, when we, when we soften out of our minds and we start to follow that vibration, we build trust. Um, we start to, to interact and so documents and control and things that we used to need to hold on to mean less to us because our heart's already telling us to step forward. So the, tr the, the, the trust is felt in the body. It's felt, it's felt in our acknowledgement of what the body system is doing. So for the last two or three thousand years, we have been a structured culture that used docu documentation and dogma to build um, systems, right? Whether it's trust, whether it's faith, whether it's structure, whether it's institutions, these systems are there to tell us, hey, if you read it, it's true. If you study it, it's true. If you see, if you trust this professor or this um, academic or this researcher, it's true. From our minds, from our heads. And this has been taught to us in schools, in churches, in media, to trust this as true. Yet, again, with these solar flares, what we're noticing is that our heart is going, nah, I don't know if I do, right? Our intelligences are coming online and, they're, and we're at odds. Yeah, I've always thought that about her or him. I've always listened to them, but now I don't know if I even want to. I don't know if I can. Because we're at odds with these systems, these, these rigid um, forms of proving that something exists or, or staying stuck up here, right? Um, and we can feel, sh you know, like stifled, um, stuck. And, and, and I've noticed that, that since I've been back in Whitefish, it's almost like my, like, like my breathing is, is, is too tight and, 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 I'm, and I don't want to go back into some of that rigid thinking. And that's why we're talking about this, right? Because it feels too tight. And I wanted to show you something that, well, Osho can be very Zen, of course. It's called the Zen Osho Tarot. So when he talks about the king and the queen, of air of the mind he's talking about precision control details layers systems and and how that precision point can be held it can also be um control that there are very little things that you can let go of and actually relax into with the queen it's the same thing even a little bit i like this one because she reminds me both of the wicked witch of the west and sort of that catholic nun persona you know like it's very structured very systematic and very um, understood. So when you hold these two together in air, and then you go into the heart of water with the king, or excuse me, the king and the queen, what we have is this is a great example of what happens when the heart intelligence starts to expand. And you notice that there's a hand sort of gently covering the mind saying, pay, much, pay more attention to this, right? And, and even like putting the hand on the gut, which is like, know that these three exist and pay attention to this one. With her, there isn't even a head in the picture. There is just this DNA structure that's alive and gathering information and bringing it into the lotus flower. So when you hold these two together in contrast, I wonder if this isn't what we're actually doing right now, is, is, is trying to navigate between something that is very structured and known and, and precise to something that's a lot more open and flowing and we're not used to it, right? And as adults, it doesn't matter whether we're 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or 80, we're being challenged with releasing some of the dependence, some of the single navigations that we use from here and starting to um, pull in more of what we trust, more of what trust can feel like, what more trust can look like, right? And, and, I, and I guess the reason that I wanted to talk about this today 
and bring it into parent coaching and bring it into um, the parent-child relationship is better. Um, is that, you know, our children are, especially the 30 and unders, they have a much more pronounced heart intelligence and they get stuck sometimes, whether it's with us as parents or grandparents or teachers or adults in their world who are more um, rigid in their alignment to what needs to happen, what the systems, the institutions, the, st the structures have been. And they're looking at that and they're saying, that is incongruent, that is out of resonance with me. Um, I feel dissonance with you and I don't really know how to tell you that school or this person or this environment is, is not feeling really good to me. So when we add these intelligences together, what we're really asking ourselves to do is not to eliminate the mind, but to bring the shields down and to allow information to come in in a different way. So I have six tips for you today and I'll go through them and I wanna keep this short. So let's I try to keep it long, you know, in a, in a length of time that you can all watch it and, and, and watch it a couple times if it, if it hits some buttons for you and, and starts to teach you something or uh, open something up or um, present in new information. So number one, spend some time with your heart. Spend some time um, both breathing into your chest, expanding and feeling and going, where are my feels? Where are my feelings coming up? And, and when are they present? And how do I read them in my field, right? And if you really want to dive into it, you can go do the research. <laughs> you can look at the Heart Intelligence. You can look at Heart Math Institute. You can feel it, play it with it, study it. However you want to approach it, get to know the heart on a different level. Go right after it, right? Number two. Notice the inner dialogue between your head and your heart. Notice that when your heart says something, your head's like, nah, that can't be true. Or, or how it goes, well, then what about this? And what about this? And so what you want to do is pay attention to when they're fighting or when they're, they're, they're incongruent or when they're starting to work together. Because what we're really looking at is a partnership between the head, which gathers information and data and, and presents structures and systems to you and the heart, which reads all of the vibration in the environment and brings it together, right? So this is our greatest challenge and our greatest gift right now is how to partner these two together. Number three, notice how the details um, may become less important to you. Some of the, the exact timelines, some of the, the checklists, some of the things that we've held on to in order to um, especially when we're anxious, in order to control or navigate through something that's really scary as we're changing um, perspectives, let go of those details and watch what happens. You know, what happens when you feel like you, you didn't even make a shopping list and you trusted yourself to go there and get what you wanted. Um, pay attention to how you trust yourself and if there's an inner dialogue of, oh, I can't do this or yes I can and watch because what we're really trying to do is we we have plans and we have actions what we're trying to do now is bring in trust and some fluidity into those so that again they're pairing together uh, number four boundaries are easier when you're navigating from your heart boundaries are easier because it, if it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good there's no oh what's he gonna think what if I say this? What if I don't want to go there? If it doesn't feel good, you just go, no, I'm not going to do that. So how we connect with others is easier or clearer, right? From ourself, coming out from ourself. So I've noticed this with my two and a half year old granddaughter that when I am in my heart, we have virtually no um, conflict as far as time, as far as what to eat, as far as getting in the car or getting out of the car. When I'm holding on to details in my head and I'm, and I'm trying to hit some kind of schedule, man, we can, we can like get locked in occasionally on, on these things where I go, okay, just soften and talk to her telepathically, talk to her with your heart and it changes. Um, number five, hmm. allow more. That's what I would say, allow more. Get curious, open up and go, well, if that worked, what if I try it over here? So allowing is something that we aren't really used to doing because when we allow, it opens up and, it, and oh, we're vulnerable, we're susceptible. Oh, things might come in that we don't know. Allow more and trust. 
how you navigate that. Trust how you swim with it. Trust how it works. Trust, trust, trust. So here is the card, um, which is the, the, I think this is the, this is the Knight of Cups, right? It's how you just trust that where I'm gonna go, where I'm gonna land is gonna work, it's gonna be okay. And number six, the last one. Again, have compassion. Have compassion because there are those around you who are holding really, really tight to their, their, their mind intelligence because that's all they know. And their fears and their lack of trust within them are gonna come up. And as things are moving and changing and expanding, it's just making their world harder and harder and harder. And the anxiety is going up, the sensitivity, reactivity is going up. Have compassion for that. And also have compassion for yourself. Because as you release this shackles uh, in your mind, the way that it is held on to the way you do things, it's, <laughs> there's doubts, there's scare, you know, you're afraid, um, your trust level goes up, you feel wide open and exposed. So have compassion for how we're all trying to navigate through these changing cellular systems within us that are opening us up to a more vibrational way of being. So if you like this, um, drop me a note or a comment down below. Um, share some experiences. Let me know um, how it landed with you. And if this is something you'd like some help with, you can find me on denisedryden.com. You take care and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.